So uh, let's begin. We're going to paint some cars, some buildings, some figures, some boats in this uh, Norfolk um, coastal scene. Uh, you can see the finished painting here. I'm going to show you how I got from A to B and eventually ended up with um, with this. So we're going to start out with um, a touch of cerulean blue into the sky using this mop brush. Um, it's always best at the start of the painting to keep all your values, especially in the sky, uh, very light. So keep your values light to begin and then once you've got that first wash in, um, you can start to build up the tones in strength. We're going to go over the over the roofs there. Didn't need to think about whites of the sails here, so you need to be careful. I'm going to leave that as the paper. I'm just using the tip of the brush, sort of tickling in this first wash. Most important thing is to keep um, the paint nice and fluid, if you like, uh, and try and, and and make sure we've got some of these uh, design principles in place. I'll get onto those in a second. So now we're going to take um, a touch of neutral tint, add it to the uh, original sort of mixture and sort of grey it up a little bit. It's a bit of dry brush there. You know the cars, there's a bit of sparkle. And then I'm just going to come down with some random brush strokes. Um, a bit more liquid, let that blend and bleed in. I'm not going to linger too long here. I'm going to leave a few white patches underneath to suggest highlights. Carefully go around these figures and then uh, just come across something that's sort of warmed up this grey colour on this side, so if we're kind of mixing the greys up a little bit, we don't want them all, all all the same warmth or coolness. <coughs> Excuse me, and that's um, just about it on that one. As I was saying earlier about principles of design, um, you really got to make sure you're thinking about the painting as a finished vision, a finished product, part of that finished product um, are all the key elements we will get back to that in a second we're now going into some um, the same mixture but a touch of ultramarine blue and I'm just going to wash in um, the first wash slightly darker than the sky um, for these uh, buildings so we're just going to go carefully around the figures uh, cut in around the cars and uh, slowly start to build this up. But as I was saying about principles of design, um, unity is one of them. And, and when we're talking about unity, we really uh, need to think about the picture as a whole. You know, a blank sheet of paper with nothing on it has unity. So, as you can see, these grey mixtures that we're popping in, um, the blue-grey mixtures, from the sky through to the foreground through to these buildings is unity because we've got various uh, shades and strengths of the the same color really um, and that in itself is creating a unity but that will kind of shine through as we carry on and put in more washes so <clears throat> excuse that strange noise that's my smart meter disconnecting again for some bizarre reason okay so hopefully um, we understand a little bit about unity and, and this is the unity of of, uh, of colour that we're talking about uh, so it's all about having the right kinds of understanding and knowledge to put a painting together rather than just haphazardly you know dabbing here and dabbing there there's a little lot of thought goes in we're now going to warm up and start to pop in some suggested shadows and let this bleed 
bleed down a bit. This uh, paper is not quite um, damp yet, but that's fine. Uh, we'll just have a little thinking and a little mix up here. And pop these in. Just to slow this down a little bit so you can see the, the brush strokes and the way this works. So as I was saying, unity is one of the sort of design principles we need to focus on. Another one, of course, is, is conflict. And I've got several videos on conflict and contrast and the principles of, of, of that. Um, it breaks down really into eight principles. <clears throat> and there's an interesting exercise, actually, to look at other artists' work and even your own work and try and see if you've got those um, principles of contrast and conflict working in your paintings. Anyway, getting sidetracked there, let's get back to the uh, this mixture of, this is a sort of uh, grey mixture with a touch of neutral tint and some um, ultramarine. And you can see how liquid this is. We're just carefully gonna paint and cut in now around these figures and, and around the cars. This is just popping in some of the darker uh, parts of these buildings. So we're just going to go under the eaves here and uh, pop those in and just let that blend and bleed. I know this paper, uh, the under underwash was uh, wet, but that's absolutely fine. We're going to slow this down so you can see these brush marks going uh, up and down and out and how it works and how this blending and bleeding you know is, is really effective wet into wet basically uh, you can see just the tip the tip of the brush being used to, to create um, the desired effect and we're going to go around the heads of these figures as well I was talking earlier about different design elements and, and uh, principles and uh, while I'm carrying on with the same passage I want to get across to one of them which is dominance. There are many ways you can dominate a painting or have one um, part or all of it dominated by say for example shapes. So in this painting lots of the shapes are, are rectangles be dominated by you know certain colors or it might be dominated by really dark passages so there's many ways to dominate uh, that domination in in your your painting is something you need to be thinking about uh, as a finished vision really otherwise um, you're going to end up with a mismatch of all kinds of elements going on that conflict and don't really work so I just use my fingers here now to just dab in and dab out a few um, unwanted runs. Um, this is granulated quite nicely on those two buildings. So granulating is where it goes into the tooth, but some of this needs to be taken out by a tissue. And so we've got soft edges and hard edges. So we've got uh, this, this conflict or contrast going on. Uh, as much as we possibly can. So I'm just going to take out some of these because once they dry, um, they're going to leave an edge. Now, if you want an edge, it's great. If you don't, you're going to have to deal with them before they dry. So remember, whilst the uh, wash is wet, you can you can do stuff. You can move in. You can change things. Uh, one of the other elements that I, I want to talk about that's this crucial is, is uh, repetition. You know, it's something where within each painting you have uh, repeated uh, passages, for example, that are going to hold that whole painting together. It's almost like a rhythm. You know, think of music. Uh, we have a rhythm underneath. They've got a rhythm that the eye can sort of enjoy, really. So I'm just going to go slightly darker and cut around uh, this car, popping in these darks here, just really with the tip of the brush, 
the moment we've used the same brush, uh, quite a large mop brush, which means um, we get the painting quickly and it reduces the need or the, the temptation to fiddle around with um, mixtures that are not too dry. So you need to have the right brush for the job. And this is a large painting at 15 by 22 inches. So bigger brushes are advisable. So I was saying about repetition, the main thing is you've got repeated points of interest, like might be repeated shapes, like we said before with the rectangles, or a repetition of colors where they keep popping up in the painting. Um, so that's what we need to do. So this is a great way to use your imagination when you're repeating um, colors or repeating shapes or repeating any element uh, that's going to create the desired and finished effect. So uh, let's move on. Um, yeah, we're gonna gonna start now to move into this left hand building and, and come in even darker. I know these these initial washes look really dark, but they will um, lighten up. They always lighten up uh, once they've dried, as you'll see. And this is just getting this in quite quickly, leaving a few little spaces in between, uh, little little chinks of of the uh, first wash. And then kind of letting the paint and the water do their own thing, really. It's kind of important. Let's just pop in this, uh, this chimney edge. And uh, a slightly warmer mix here. That was a touch of um, burnt sienna that we popped in to the original grey mixture. Uh, just to find some of these uh, rooftops here. This uh, very liquid mixture, again leaving a few gaps underneath. And then going to cut in around the car. So, hopefully you're understanding that um, there are many elements to a painting that you probably wouldn't notice on just first, first sight and having a look but it's key to make sure you've got as many of those elements in as you possibly can. So we've talked about four of them uh, in terms of unity and conflict, that's contrasts, dominance and repetition. Another one to be aware of as we go along is alternation. So it's closely connected to repetition actually but it's, it's what occurs in between the repeats. So what's going on in there? So it could be color, it could be intensity of the color. And it's kind of like the difference between the warm colors and the cool colors. And within that, you're also gonna have neutral colors. Um, so the grays are kind of neutral. They might be slightly warm and they might be slightly cool. Uh, but then you're going to have obvious warm colours like your, your yellow ochres and um, reds and oranges and so on. And then the cooler colours like blues and greys and some of the greens, they can be either warm or they can be cool. But I'm now just going to go around and quickly pop in these um, chimney pots. At this stage, I'm kind of thinking about the roofs being left, you know, almost the paper white. Uh, I think that's quite a good counter change, but as we go along, we'll see how that pans out. I've now moved across to a finer uh, brush. This is a number two, a Skoda travel brush. And I'm just gonna come in and paint some sort of dry brush work uh, around the eaves and just define uh, some of those without going into any great detail. You can see I'm holding the brush quite high up, uh, which means I'm not gonna go detailed because the control is is uh, different so you get different types of brush marks if I go in closer uh, to the uh, bristles to close to the tip then you're going to get more control it's almost like holding a pencil in that way so just be aware of how we're holding the brush just take this out dab this out it's not quite working 
the most fascinating thing for me about watercolour is its, um, its unpredictability. It's, it's a fantastically um, versatile medium because you can be very transparent with your washes and have you know, the other washes underneath shining through. But you can also be really opaque like we're coming in and designing the shadows under these cars. And you're not going to see anything except for the very dark base shadows here, um, which are going to create a lot of conflict in terms of counter change. Counter change is the difference between the light and the dark, so the darkest darks and the lightest lights. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll pop in some of these wheels as well with this uh, neutral tint mixture. And it's really just you know, defining uh, these shadows around the cars. Notice that my the way I'm holding the brush now is, is closer to the to the bristles, so I've got more more control. So a little bit of careful painting. Um, let's move on then to balance. Uh, that's one of our eight sort of principles or of of design um, is having a balance in the painting. By balance, we mean either symmetrical or asymmetrical. Uh, oh, let's just pop, pop in these uh, windows now. Uh, I'm gonna try and mix these up a little bit. We need to just make sure it's not just completely blacked out, if you like. So again, that's, that's creating a bit of contrast. As I was saying about balance, um, the main thing to do with balance is the symmetrical and asymmetrical. By symmetrical, we mean yeah, the balance between two equal sides or spaces, say of a, of a rectangle. Um, I mean, it can be quite boring and static visually, um, so we need to, to kind of excite that up a little bit, really. Um, so it's important to make sure that the symmetry that we have is um, mixed. If you've got a shape that's um, symmetrical and you just keep repeating it and it's the same colour and the same tone, that's really boring. So we need to, to make sure we've got mixtures there. Now going into this next window, a slightly different mixture. I've added a touch of um, ultramarine into this to, to kind of hint at a bluer tone. Uh, still using this neutral tint as well. As you can now see, we're defining some of these uh, car windows. And then onto the left-hand one as well. Again, sort of painting these in quite carefully. And looking at the shapes, that's kind of, kind of a curve to the, the edge of that window. And we'll leave a slight touch on the top there of, of light for where the roof is. So if we're looking at asymmetrical um, balance, it's, it's almost like a seesaw effect. So... So you might have a large shape close to the centre of a picture is balanced by a smaller shape further out, for example. Um, or it might be close to the edge of the paper. It's quite, until you actually see it in a painting, it's quite hard to, to explain. In terms of balance of, of this one, we have got the large shapes of the houses at the back and smaller shapes of the cars, they kind of echo. And of course we've got smaller um, rectangles in terms of the chimney pots yeah, so you can see that there's sort of to be a, th a theme there and then obviously smaller rectangles again in terms of the the windows that we had to pop in so I'm now moving over to a number 12 round brush uh, mixing up some uh, all, all kinds of mixtures there it was burnt umber touch of um, burnt sienna back into the neutral tint mix. I'm just going to darken up these shadows there. They just just were a little bit too light. Slightly. 
light adjustment. I just drag that in to, to bleed that off. Just being careful near those figures not to run into those. So I'm looking at my source uh, picture, which, which I took when I was down there at, up at the Norfolk coast. Let's just bleed this in a bit because we've got a lot of sharp edges on these shadows and we just need to, to vary that. I've used this mixture as well to, to cut in now um, the focal point figures here in the foreground. We need to make sure we've got some counter change going on here for these figures. Again, I'm right on the, on the end of the, the brush handle to keep this quite loose. Uh, just designing these, the legs of this figure. Using the same mixture, just want to come in, not everywhere, but in, in places slightly darker under the eaves of some of these buildings, just to balance this up a bit. Uh, just touching in these, that's it. So, popping in the uh, right hand figure with the um, warmer colours there, uh, so cad red, just pop that in, uh, and also pop in a mixture here of, with a touch of burnt sienna for uh, the faces of these characters as well. Fit on the fingers, just take those out, there we go. It's working quite well. So using fingers again to just uh, blur off uh, around these cars. And back in with the brush now just to, to soften it. There's a, a touch of clear water in here just softening this off around here. Um, so we've not got sharp edges everywhere. So here's some uh, neutral tint as I'm just dropping in here to strengthen up around this uh, car. This is a, a tree here. There's a touch of neutral tint, um, cadmium yellow, and some Prussian blue that I'm just, just dropping straight into the tree. I'm trying to keep this loose. Here we go with the cad yellow. Dropping that in, cad yellow again. Just plop this in and just let it do its own thing. Um, yeah, Prussian blue. Touch of neutral tint. Just try and keep keep it loose and, and wet into wet, really. And then just being careful around around the cars. And just I need to. There we go. Fingers again, I'll take out some edging and, and some tissue if it doesn't quite work with your finger, you want the effect you want. Uh, with a number six, a Skoda brush now, just touching in some of these. Oh, that's better, we can now just see the edge of the car. So, really important to, to uh, keep an eye on the overall effect that we have. So there we, 
there we go big dark patch there around that car but also that kind of ties in the two figures as well let's still come in with the um this gray mixture and we'll just we'll just indicate a few lines in here and uh, just splotch in a few there we go just a bit of splatter and just as if we had tire marks and, and cars are come screeching around in this car park uh, which happens uh, a lot as we know in car parks so we'll just keep that quite minimal it takes the eye into the painting as a cerulean blue mixture now just cut these in just bleed them in there a bit I'm just go for some red on this one straight into the cat red side just waiting to wet that uh, back into our blue gray mixture touch of cobalt blue in here just leave a few bits and bobs shining through highlights if it's too much we'll take some of this out as well same sort of bluey mixture we're just gonna gonna pop this in on this character here just gonna keep this quite light mixture guys just have this blending and bleeding attach in there just casually walking along This is damp, I'm just going to touch in uh, some suggestions of shadows on this right hand side. Of course, I could have waited for those to dry and then pop them in, and we would have had a sharper edge, but I like to mix it up a bit sharp edges, blurred edges, just the blending and bleeding of paint. And while it's wet and you drop it in, you don't keep fiddling. You you're going to get translucent washes in there. Let's come with the uh, cad red. Let's pop in a, a bag. This character's carrying a bag. Let's just pop that in. So, uh, moving on. Uh, painting's come on quite well now. We need to think about uh, shadows, let's just sort out these faces by just uh, fiddling around with my fingers. I tend to do a lot in paintings, like to get, get stuck in. There we go, we're just going to cut around these uh, the heads of these figures just a bit darker with our with the green mixture there. Uh, it's Prussian blue with a touch of cad yellow just to define those and kind of join things up a bit so passages are not left standing out on their own. Um, in terms of our uh, design and our principles of design, 
got a couple more to look at. And um, we're gonna, gonna look at harmony and we're gonna look at uh, gradation. When we're talking about harmony, I mean, these things can sound a little bit um, uh, pie in the sky, but actually they're not. And if you study art really, really carefully, you'll see uh, that the, the principles that we've talked about of design are in um, successful paintings. Before we get into that, let's just sort this character out. So we're popping in um, his head with this darker mixture. And we're just popping his body with a burnt sienna mix as well. Just carefully make sure we leave a slight halo around around his body. Popping his legs, it's just a silhouette really, it's just to give a bit of movement. Coming in through those cars helps with scale as well. Notice I've gone in quite close to the tip of this brush for a bit more control. Um, and that's a number two, a Skoda synthetic brush. This guy's sort of, almost looks like he's running, running out, he's in a hurry. Uh, from his cars just to find a couple of these marks a bit a bit stronger again using this finer brush and we're now cutting some windows and I'm going to mix up the mixtures there um, really important to, to make sure we've not got everything the same tone and everything the same colour so just dab my fingers in there to just change a few things so I've painted through loads of those and we're just letting that dry. Now we're going to come back in with a few a few lines to mix things up a bit. Um, keeping it simple. Uh, popping a little chimney shadow there. On the same on the left hand side. Another chimney shadow. Just darken these off a bit. And we're getting there. quite a lot of moves in this painting so by moves I mean the amount of times that we have to go back in to paint things We're slowly building up from light to dark let's just just to find the strap of that bag there we go uh, a little bit of a mixture of neutral tint there and burnt sienna will come down whoops there we go that's better just to define the edge of this this character darken his face off a touch. And we want the eye to, to go here and these, these figures. So now we're just doing some tonal adjustments. And just strengthening the painting up really. Straight in for some cad red. Touch of cad uh, yellow as well. Going in front these orange head, these uh, tail lights. Just pop those in quite quickly, just leave them. Yep, spatter in some bits and bobs to, for variation. And again, go back for these shadows. As we build up, you can see whether we need to strengthen um, those shadow areas under the car. Really important under the car, the shadows. Probably more important than the car shapes themselves because they kind of anchor them um, to the ground we pop in the shadows of these figures there we go try and get them in once just trailing off from the leg not just sticking out from nowhere So when we're talking about harmony again, we're kind of you know, alluding to music really in, in terms of sort of notes. If you've, you've got notes that make up a chord in music, it makes it harmonious. It's just touching some bits and bobs on the roofs, just darkening up some of these. So some paintings will have a real high degree of harmony to them. You know, the elements fit, others will be quite discordant. Um, so they might be quite almost like violent in a way, you know, the, the energy that's in the painting could be quite, you know, abrasive and um, with the, the, the colour 
the choices, the tonal choices and the subject choices. And then others have this harmony of, of almost like a peacefulness, like a tranquility to them when they're finished. You can also create harmony with um, with lines and slightly curved ones. So they also help. We can get colour harmony, you know, sort of reds and oranges and sort of yellows working together. And we do have that in this painting. I'm just going to sort out these roofs and just pop in. Um, I'd been thinking about these roofs. Should I keep them all, you know, the white of the paper? And on reflection, I thought there was just the four of them together. It was just too many. So I'm kind of tonally, <clears throat> excuse me, um, reducing the impact in some of these roofs just because otherwise the eye is just going to keep going there rather than come to the figures at the foreground. Let's just pop in some blue shadow mix here, which will send that building back a bit because it's a cool colour. And we'll pop in similar here and just, just create some differences. Yeah, everything was looking a little bit samey. I quite like the roof on the right hand side building being left, you know, quite white. Um, let's just have a, have a bit more care on this mast. We need to, to go up, you can see I'm being quite careful but leaving gaps in between. So turning the brush, I don't know if you noticed that. You turn the brush to, to, to gain more pigment. Um, there you go, it's quite carefully painted there. Now I've got a line that I can pull down into. I don't know if you noticed that. Some artists are fantastic just popping in masks straight away. But if you, it's easy to curve a mast if you don't get it dead bang straight. I know other artists use rulers to do it. I don't, I don't go that far. But that was a little trick to like first map out the mast and then come down with the sort of broken lines. We're now going to the number two brush. Uh, Again, back into the burnt umber and the burnt sienna. Just there we go. If you notice the first stroke on this, I kind of practiced. I've got my my little finger kind of resting on the paper, which helps with balance. When we're, we're drawing down, I'm trying to keep it looking spontaneous as well. So, not, and here we've got a, a grey sort of mix almost like a dry mix to, to indicate some rigging on these boats. And then we'll pop in a few as a little character there, look in the boat, just doing some jobs. Uh, it's quite nice to do a little detail and also give scale because it's far away and we'll pop another character in on this uh, left hand side boat as well. Again, it creates scale, creates movement it's a bit of reality really because you know, especially up the north norfolk coast you see lots of people out um, doing jobs on their boats at the weekend <coughs> excuse me and it's really being quite restrained down here suggesting rather than painting any detail still got the whites of the paper there for the boat and then we'll pop in some sort of cast shadows in there Quite subtle and light, we don't want them too strong because they're, they're back. And now we're going to pop in the C. Just see the C straight in there, that's it. Which gives space, we'll just bless that sort of space out there, just dab out some of it was a bit strong, just dab it out, totally reduce it. This is um, coming to the highlights now. So we come into the you know, the close of the of the painting when we get out the number two Escoda and straight into the tube of um, Chinese white. So as I believe sometimes I use gouache. So the Chinese white. I'm just going to come in and sort out the highlights around some of the figures and in other places. It's important to have highlights um, we can see that I've left them in on the left hand figure for example around 
you know, the shoulders as the white of the paper and around the cars as the white of the paper. And, you know, that's good. Um, the more you can do that, the better. But sometimes as you're painting, you might need to go back in to redefine um, with gouache. And it's quite good um, as a rescuer to help uh, the painting, really. Just going to going to take out some bits and bobs over there on the right hand side so going in with some uh, yellow for the mast first before we get into the highlights change my mind and this is straight into a Naples yellow uh, and that's just going to create a bit of contrast up there it's a nice little note sort of takes your eye that way doesn't it Back to cerulean blue and a touch of cobalt blue, which we're just gonna knock in part of this sail, not everywhere. Uh, leave some of the paper showing through. Back into the fingers again. Fingers are great for painting. Just a tiny blurred cast shadow. I know what you think of some some more textural work really on this uh, foreground. A little bit clean. I mean, it's quite a big space. The actual car park itself, if you look in terms of the painting. So we'll just put in some lighter cast type shadow washes in there, greys. Now we're back to the white again. Get there eventually. Uh, just touch in here for some highlights. This guy running. There we go. Now just the top of his head, just a touch of light on his head, that'll do. And on these two main characters here, our focal point characters, to find some of the light here which will help take your eye there it's easy to go mad with the, with this uh, these white highlights but we need to be, be quite restrained I guess we'll carry on doing this the last thing I wanted to talk about in terms of principles of design was gradation and, it, and it's a way that we can can use things like rough to smooth or hot to cold or dark to light and those can be grade, gradiated um, and we're, we're looking at our paintings and you see it everywhere where um, that gradation is working so for example on, on the two main focal point characters I'm just touching up some highlights here there you can see gradation on those you know going from dark around the heads and as the shadow goes down going lighter uh, a good example of that is on these sails that I'm working on especially on the blue one on the right hand side it gradiates down the actual tone see on the blue sail comes down from a dark to a light there's some gradation nice example of gradation is also on some of the car mixers and on the second building on the left hand side the uh, blue building um, that has gradiated wash coming down so you know, you've got the, the character underneath the running character but that's gradiating down from a darker tone into a lighter tone as it goes down so unless these things are kind of pointed out to you, you probably wouldn't notice them and now just practicing my shadow kind of getting right near the end now we're bringing in the shadow this foreground shadow um, a building or something to the left not doesn't really matter what it is the main thing is this is a device to use practicing there we go bang straight in quite nice because it was fast and we've got the speckled parts coming through um, which creates quite pleasing to the eye and then we'll just mix it up to have some of this blue gray mixture um, soft edged and some of it hard edged there we go a building across on the left hand side casting a shadow across the foreground and that also throws up um, 
the figure on the left and the two figures on the right just just touching a, in a slightly warmer and slightly cooler I always try to mix up the shadows so they're not um, the same I tend to go bluer as I go back and then warmer at the foreground you know right to the the closest part to the edge of the painting so here we go and I'm probably just about done on that that's enough so we're getting into the last five minutes of this it's just touching up a few of the darks here this was burnt umber going in just to to create a little bit more impact so again with a number two escoda brush some dry brush work on the car just touching in some darker patches here so this is kind of fine adjustments really in terms of tone working better now notice I've gone quite close down to the uh, bristles for more control back up slightly on the brush to have a looser feel and effect still moving back in to the shadows kind of joining them up a bit now quite important to make sure that all of the uh, elements and areas in your painting are kind of joined that helps with harmony and unity so I hope you've enjoyed uh, this demonstration not much left to do now it's just uh, the final few things here we go with a touch of ultramarine into this grey mixture a touch of burnt sienna just strengthening up the shadow on this left hand building just to create a bit more contrast it's quite a strong shadow but it will lighten up so I thought tonally um, all of those buildings looked similar. So this is going to create real punch and uh, a zip and zap in the painting. We're just cutting around this car. Also pushes back the second building to the right. And they're just strengthening up other areas. Just pop in some shadows under the eaves and just strengthen up uh, the shadow as well. It's looking better. Fingers just to take things out and just to create a bit of variation. And that's just about it. So I'd like to thank you for uh, watching um, this demonstration. It's uh, been about a 50 minute demonstration. We'll just pop in a, a few suggestions here of, of these very pale cast shadow and just join that up so we've got a, a touch of there we go that's highlighting that a bit better send that back that's working that's good so it means a third building the right hand building there sort of pushes that out now that's better anyway thanks for joining me remember to uh subscribe 
Um, remember to comment. Uh, tell me what you think. Tell me your preferred methods of uh, painting, especially if you paint with well, any kind of brush, but large brushes as well. Love to hear from you. I'm um, just sorting out some of these patches around here, just taking them down tonally. But we're just about done, so I'll, I'll finish by popping up um, a cut version, a still version of the finished picture, and, and there it is. So thank you very much.